Mr. Math here, thanks for watching my videos. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember to click the bell icon to be notified of updates. Hello viewers, welcome back to Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And... One thing you gotta give this game credit for is the fantastic visuals. There are a lot of spots of pretty bad performance where things slow down pretty badly. What are you two doing? Trying to get up to me or something? Oh well. But yeah, there are spots where the visuals chug quite badly. But it certainly looks pretty. Let's see. I want to do a little bit more fighting. Okay, Leaf Camel. Get over here. Just so. Do it right. Like I showed you in the okay. USA. Just watch this quietly. Come on. I'm the shot. Make haste and retreat. Shoot straight. Sword bash. Rolling smash. Okay, turn on the heat, literally. Now I'm fired Let us make you Or even Rex is getting in on the pun action. Yeah. Right. I'm just you don't stand yeah. a chance against us now. Yeah. Eagle eye. So just keep it right Go Make jump. haste and retreat. Ha! Okay, and then let's smash. do that. Water special. So fast. So. I'm good job. Ha! Eagle eye. Okay, come on, I want to get up to level 3 on my special. Got it! Go for it! My flame strikes true! Play Pablo, third stage. Steam explosion break! Steam explosion break! Good to have you, you. Why not? I'm all set. Gotcha! Run it down! Tiger! Evil eye! Yeah. Rex, do you need a rest? Yes, actually. Yeah, okay. Have you considered taking the lead sometime, Ira? I'll think about it next time, Zerda. I was about People to say. Be funny though, so watch out. I'm. Rex is getting pretty low on HP there. <laughs> I was getting a bit worried. Even with all the damage I was doing, that was closer than I was comfortable with. I'd like for it to be daytime when I actually go into town. Just because it would look nicer. And here's another level 9 guy I can go for if I want. Those two in back are probably... Well, no, they're going away. Alright, let's try to take out this field armor. Let's show them a thing or three. Make sure you got my tail, Rex. Hey, you're the healer, Nia. You get mine. Shot. Ha! Our Make too, and retrieve it. My thoughts are so fast. Jack West Flash. Okay, go here we it. go. Flame. No. Everyone's getting sight. Put on the shot. Let us make use of it now. Ha! So fast. I Boy, this is gotcha. getting kind of. Far away. Okay, doing that level 2 water special. Okay, I'm getting kind of low on HP here. Ow. And get the level 3. Steam explosion break! <laughs> Steam explosion break! Well That's just so fun to hear. Gotcha! Raging Tiger! Anchor shot! Sure! 
Let us make use of it now. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Rolling smash! Come on. I wasn't planning on losing to Anchor Shot! Let us make use of it. Boy, I'm not doing much damage. I'm still getting stronger. Okay, Nia leveled up. Still an hour of game time, which means another minute and a half. Game time is one second of real time for one minute of game time. Let's see, and I'm sure there's a treasure chest over here somewhere. You're all mine. A beast hood. I don't remember what that does. Okay, accessories, beast hood, increases dexterity by 20. No, wait, that's what I've got now. <laughs> I'm reading this wrong. Okay, leather gloves increases dexterity by 20. The beast hood increases aggro reduction by 20. That might be a decent one for Nia. Because she's the healer. I don't want her to have aggro. You know, aggro reduction in general is kind of weak. But early in the game might be good. Sure, let's go with aggro reduction. And then instead of increased HP to self, let's go with increased luck. Nia, I don't know if you noticed this because I certainly didn't on my first playthrough. Nia has a move where she inflicts the break status effect. And the higher her luck, the more likely break actually lands. Let's see. Let's look at WP here. Look at her twin rings. I could improve Jaguar Slash. I'd rather improve Butterfly Blade. Butterfly Blade. Yeah, Butterfly Blade inflicts the break status effect, which is extremely important. And the higher her luck, the more likely the effect actually lands. So giving her that luck increasing status effect is definitely useful. That luck increasing accessory, I should say, not status effect. Let's see, anything else around here I can scare up? I still have 45 seconds of real time before I get back today. Now eh, let's kill a bunnet. Okay, time to take you down. I can take care of myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ow. Ha! Okay. These guys. Anchor shot. Up. Anchor Anchor shot. And retrieve it. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> that didn't take very long. Easy peasy. Long enough that it's going to be Come on, daytime. Stop our time. All right. Time to head into Torgoth. Hang on a moment, guys. Is it just me, or is the cloud sea level higher than it was before? I think you're right. Guess it must be what they call high tide. The cloud sea level changes because of the Gormont Titan walking through it, right? At times, the clouds reach scarcely up to the Titan's ankles, while at other times, like now, the clouds are around its belly. With the clouds at this height, I guess we won't be able to get back to the place where we made camp. Indeed, that area will be submerged beneath the clouds. But the Titan's always moving, so I'm sure the clouds will be lower again sooner or later. Quite right. I'd heard about stuff like this, but it's kind of amazing to see it firsthand. You don't get phenomena like this in Argentum, or in Lefteria, that's for sure. Allrest really is a big place. All right, that's enough gawping. Let's get going. Torgoth is so close now I can smell it. 
The Titans of Alres are surrounded by the Cloud Sea, and as Rex and his friends were just discussing, the Cloud Sea has tides that come and go. The shifting tides will close off places you could once visit, as well as opening up places that you couldn't reach, so plan your adventure accordingly. You can check the status of the Cloud Sea's tides by looking at the Environmental Information Indicator, which we, we were told before is up in the top right corner of the screen. Take a look at the newly added icon in the top right corner. If the Cloud Sea's level is shown above the median line, that means the clouds are at high tide. Conversely, if it's below the median line, it means the clouds are currently at low tide. Yeah, so high tide. Alright, just a couple more seconds. Morning. There we go. Let us face the day with a renewed vigor. Time to go into town. And arrived. <laughs> a skip travel point outside of town. Now, time for anime tropes. So, this is Torogoth. It hasn't changed a bit. Nia? It's nothing. Okay then. I'll show you to an end. Then I'm out of here. Okay, almost time for anime tropes. Torgoth. What the bloody hell is this? Don't tell me this is meant to be me. A remarkable likeness, to say the least. Oi, did you see some things? Uh, no. I fear they may have conflated our countenances, my lady. How very awful. Fie! Who has the courage to heed the Empire's call? Your strong heart today will build a strong, more ordained tomorrow! Of course, you get more than a salary. Pension and benefits are included. Distinguish yourself, and you could even join the nobility. For the glory of the Ardanian Empire and His Majesty, Emperor Niall! Come now! Who wants to be the hero of tomorrow? Hmm. What's the deal over there? Driver recruitment. Driver recruitment? Recently, they've been recruiting drivers from all over. The pool of potentials is ever shrinking. They must have run out of candidates in the military. What do you mean by potentials? I'm not sure I follow. Just see for yourself. Don't do it, bro. It's too dangerous. What will we do if something happens to you? Who will look after us? Please! I, I know it's dangerous, but if I can be, become a driver... Out of the way, pipsqueak! Go! All right! Come on, blade boy Oh, Show me what you got! <laughs> Yeah, he's done for. Indeed. <laughs> oh ho! Old bark and no bite! What a shame! Oh, what just happened? All that blood. Couldn't handle the core crystal's power. That's what happens. When someone unqualified touches a core crystal, truly lamentable. Wait, you need a qualification to be a driver. Perhaps aptitude would be a better word. Aptitude. That's the name of the no. chapter. Is there nobody else here ready to test their strength for the glory of the Empire? Oh, how about you? What say you? 
dash forward, sir, with bold heart. No. Don't, don't worry. Your big bro's gonna be a driver, and then we'll be set for life. Don't, don't do it. it. <laughs> There's your aptitude. crystal turn into a weapon that is how blades are born rex what but when i touch pyra's she's a special case pyra's the aegis remember so the usual rules don't apply all that business with sharing her life force it's not exactly normal wait what does the aegis even mean gin and malos they called her that too don't know all I know is that it's some kind of legendary blade. Why don't you just ask her yourself? Let's go. No point sticking around for the enrollment ceremony and all that boring stuff. Yeah, lots of questions raised there that don't have answers yet. Including some questions that aren't actually mentioned. Anyway, you've arrived in Torgoth, Gormont's largest settlement, and gameplay-wise, really only settlement. There's were there's word of other settlements that pop up in you know side conversations and stories and quests and whatnot, but you never actually see any. And in some cases, that is kind of important. In other cases. Yeah, it's just flavor for the world building. Anyway, now's a good time to talk about developing towns. Towns in Allrest are rated according to their level of development. This is called their development level, or dev level for short. A town's development level can be raised by earning dev points. When a town's dev level goes up, you can expect the price of goods and shops to go down. Some shops might even expand their ranges and sell never-before-seen products. You can earn dev points by completing quests and resolving residence difficulties. It's also possible to earn a few dev points just by talking to people you meet. You can view the dev level of a town anytime you go shopping, and also by going to main menu skip travel. As a public spirited citizen of Allrest, you should do all you can to raise the dev level of its settlements. So, if you go to main menu, skip travel, I mentioned this before. You see the Argentum Trade Guild is currently highlighted and over on the picture on the right side shows dev level. Dev level 1. Gormont, on the other hand, is still dev level 0 because I only just got here. And the tutorial mentioned doing quests and talking to people. What it didn't mention is buying and selling stuff. That also increases the dev level. And there's the... Um, tutorial's tendency of not mentioning important facts or, you know, being confusing with the important facts, stuff like that, is just... The tutorials, I'm telling you, they're not very good. Anyway. There's some important stuff here. The blacksmith. Courtships. You can often find core chips from uh, enemy drops or in treasure chests, but also you can just go to blacksmiths in towns. Core chips increase the power of your blade's stats. All of these will give more auto attack, but at least on Pyra here, they'll also give more critical rate. I've mentioned before that with Pyra, Critical rate is a lot more important than block rate. So, yeah, let's get a wing chip here. I have the money for it. Easy. Let's 
So I get a lot more auto attack power, which, as I've mentioned before, increases the power of all your attacks. Not just the auto attacks, but also your arts and specials. And then the draw mark here. Same thing. Now, Dromark, you're never going to get a lot of damage from Dromark. He's a healer blade. So, critical rate, block rate, auto attack, not really all that important. But, eh, it's, you know, better than nothing. Another thing to keep in mind with these chips, you'll see that if you look at the top half of the screen there, underneath each one it says no special effects. Sometimes core chips give special effects, like increased stats, uh, increased uh, critical rate, increased critical damage, you know, things like that. None of these three chips give any kind of special effects, so, you know, just go for the one with the most power. And there we go. That'll definitely come in handy. And Mahdi over here has something to say. Nature and greenery are the heart of Gormod. If you're after a souvenir, make sure it's real Gormadi wood. Now this, I have to hear. Grand, isn't it? If there's one thing Torgoth has over the rest of Gormod, it's the quality of the trees. So of course you'll find better wooden craftwork here than anywhere else in the land. All of it handmade, too. Just take some of these beauties in your hands. I guarantee you'll be smitten. Wow, pretty impressive. Yeah, just flavor text. No... Nothing special to talk about there. And there's an invisible wall on the other side of the crowd. You can thread your way through, but you can't go any further. Okay, so there's really nothing here. And accessory shop. Let's talk to her. So we've got... Uh, items most items we already have there's also the Nopon mask which increases aggro rather than decreasing it the beast hood is for decreasing aggro the Nopon mask is for increasing it so again the effect is pretty minor it's really not worth it in my opinion at least not in the long run early in the game it might be helpful but later on not really worth it but for example if I want to do more about keeping the aggro on Rex and off of Nia, the Nopon Mask might be a good item for him. Still, I don't think it's all that important. Just the damage he does in battle ought to do the trick. Axe attachment. If I had a Great Axe Blade, this would be useful. I don't have any Great Axes. If I had a Mega Lance Blade, the Lance attachment would be useful, but I don't. And Red Thread, I already have one of those. So, yeah, nothing worth buying. On the other hand, might be something worth selling. Let's see. What accessories do I have? Let's alphabetize them. The Abyss Vest I'm definitely keeping. Attack Stone increases auto attack damage by 20%. Blah. Get rid of that. Friendship Ring increases the HP restored when reviving a teammate by 25%. Eh... I don't think I'm ever likely to use it, but I'll keep it just in case. Memory Locket prevents affinity loss when a teammate falls in battle. Same thing, probably won't ever need it, but I'll keep it anyway. Muscle Belt increases strength by 20, or the better version, which increases it by 21. Let's sell the lesser version. Red Thread, Rigid Vest. Shell camo, wolf shoes. Yeah. I got about 800 uh, gold from that. Let's see. Nothing else I want to sell. Yeah. Nothing else I want to sell. I only have one cylinder left. Probably be a good idea to buy a few more. There happens to be a cylinder shop over here. Oh, come on, tutorial. I was... Uh, have you been shopping yet? If you make it to a new town, be sure to check out what the local merchants have to offer. 
there's a good chance they'll have a few new products that were previously unavailable to you. You might even want to use skip travel to head back to Argentum and see how the goods here compare to the ones there. Yeah, I could. Maybe later. Yeah. The cylinders would actually be less expensive at Argentum than they are here. In fact, let's actually check that out. So, normal cylinders are 500. Let's, let's actually go back to Argentum and check it out there. And let's warp to the central exchange, like so. Yeah, let's do some comparison shopping. Whew. Let's rest a spell. So? Oh, it's taking a while for the textures we? to come in. Look how smooth that thing. Oh, there's there's all the rust now. <laughs> okay, where was it? Over here. Yeah, this is the correct direction. The salvager shop was right over here. So, yeah, instead of 500 for normal cylinders, it's only 450. And instead of 2,000 for the silver cylinders, it's 1,800. The reason for the difference is because I have Argentum here at dev level 1. And Torgoth is still at dev level 0. So, sure, let's buy a few. Ten. Let's buy ten. Okay. And back to Gormont. Torgoth. I've only found the Torgoth Arch. So back to the Arch. Yeah, to get back and forth between Argentum and Gormont, I have to skip travel. Let's rest so, shall we? I can't walk between them. Okay. So, here's a uh, salvager goods shop where I can sell stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have anything... I don't have enough of anything to sell. In fact, I don't have anything this guy wants. Okay. An artwork store. Pouch items that grant extra affinity. Kind of meh, in my opinion. A music shop. Pouch items that do special recharge. Special recharge actually can be good. I prefer arts recharge, but there's an argument to be made for specials recharge. Because if you have your specials recharging automatically, then you don't have to rely on just the arts to get them done. Still, I prefer to stick with the arts. Arts recharge. And then ox cores. Still setting up. Yeah, because we don't have any ox cores yet. But we saw that tutorial where ox cores are basically like accessories for blades. Alright, this is going to be kind of tough. I know what's coming up here. Let me check really quickly. So both of them are level 8 right now. Leather gloves and muscle belt. I have a better muscle belt. Let's switch to that one. Okay, I think that'll do. And then affinity. I have 687. Still not enough to get rapid attack, darn it. Well, I'm saving up for that, so let's just keep holding off. And then what's her affinity? I've got 711. It's not enough for Feral Awakening. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not upgrading either of them yet. Okay. And then... Yeah, I'm going to hold off until a butterfly blade. And 
then I could do rolling smash or sword bash or uh, let's see more damage more damage doesn't improve recharge time only damage uh, I like sword bash let's give him an upgraded sword bash Okay. All right. Let's do it. This whole thing with core crystals, touching them to create blades. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. We blades start out formless, anchored to the world only by our core crystal. Only the touch of a potential can imbue us with form and being, and it is by those forms we come to be known. So you see, my boy, in some ways it is only the fated touch of a driver that allows the blades to exist at all. Wow. Why does it happen that way, though? Now, that is something no one knows. It's just how it's always been. Blades come in all shapes and sizes. Some human-shaped, some not. Some people say the shape depends on the kind of person the driver is. The resonance between blade and driver is a mysterious thing. Pyra. She was crying when I met her. Was she brought to life by someone once? Just like a normal blade? What is the Aegis? Really? Halt! Nobody move! Oh dear. Looks like Imperial troops. Great. Hey, what's going on? That fugitive in your company is an enemy of the state, a member of Torna. Nia? A member of Torna? It's her, all right. Gormothy Driver, White Beast Form Blade. She looks exactly like the wanted poster. What wanted poster? See for yourself. <laughs> wow, it really does. Oi, watch it. Uh, I mean, no way. This doesn't look anything like. Wait, we've got no time for this. Who cares if it looks just like her? <laughs> hmm. Now, as for you, you look like a driver too. Registration number? Five, three, nine? Knock it off, you fool. All new drivers must register with Endor. No number means you must be an illegal, unregistered driver. No, you don't get it. You're coming with me. We'll see what the console has to say about this. Huh. Rex, Dromak and I are going to make a move. Get ready to run. We're not leaving without you. This is our problem, not yours. I'm pretty sure he wants to arrest all of us. So this is my problem too. Sheesh, you're a stubborn one in you. Gramp says the same thing. Okay, we go on three. We'll go left, you go right. Okay. Just give the word. Okay, let's do this. You, you, you're going to resist? Seriously? One, two... All, all right, men. We've got them outnumbered. Move in and take them down. Three! Well, he's not wrong. There's seven of them and four of us. Watch yourself, Ricks. You put your feet up over there. All right, Gramps? Cancel attacks. I've already been doing this. It's time for me to tell you about cancel attacks. If you execute an art at the precise moment that an auto attack connects, a ring of light will appear around you. This ring of light tells you that your cancel attack has been successful. And not just with arts, but also with specials. A successful cancel attack will be more effective, meaning do more damage, than an art executed normally. 
Also, the recharge gauge will fill up faster afterwards so you can really get an advantage from using cancel attacks. The effect of the cancel attack will increase with the stage of the auto attack, so try to execute it on the third blow to get the most bang for your buck. Don't forget! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make you 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 Let's Yeah. It's fine. We'll get him yet. <laughs> Don't push yourself too hard. Current objective: defeat the Imperial soldiers. Uh. Okay. All right. Let's go for the small fry. Put your best foot forward, Rex. You put your feet up over there. All right, Gramps. Pop, yeah. Be here, Be here. Let us make use of it now. Okay, let's go get that potion. Okay, got him. Be here. I don't want to go for the cat. Alright. So Heat break. Heat break. Why not? There we go. That went a lot better. They're so strong. Such strength from a measly two fighters. Their drivers are right. Rex, no! You got it. A wall made of fire. Now we get Psychic to the hard part. Just when I thought I could enjoy a little peace and quiet. Oh, lady, Bridget. Bridget? Is she a blade? Where, where's her driver? My driver is otherwise engaged at present. I am here alone. No driver? <laughs> Lady Bridget is the jewel of Morrissey, the strongest blade in the Empire. Even alone, she's more than a match for you. Lady Bridget, these miscreants are terrorists working for Thor. Please lend me your power to bring them to justice. That Emerald Core Crystal. Could it really be true? Well, well. Captain Padre, you are not to kill them. Take these ones in alive. Roger. Men, bring the you know what up! I like the way they're posing. Alright, so the captain's the weak sister here. I wanna make sure to target him. Okay, time to take you down. Stay in your Focusing on target. You're done! I urge you! Eagle eye! You're done! Let's go! Make haste and retreat! No You're done! Jaguar flash! Let's make use of it now! Be here! 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 Let's make use of it now! For sure. okay, this won't do. Young gun! It'll be fine. Rolling smash! Come on. Flash. Just keep Young gun! Keep in ah. one piece. We don't know now. Go! 
Okay, special. Okay, got him. You may have got the gist for yourself already, but let me go into a little more detail on blade combos. Hmm. Yes, I've been doing blade combos already, but thanks. The indicator the arrow is pointing at right now represents a combo request from a blade currently engaged by the character you're controlling. This is displayed when one of your currently engaged blade specials would be able to initiate a blade combo, and also when one of those blade specials would be able to extend a blade combo that's currently in progress. Blade combos can have massive impact on the battlefield, so try not to miss these opportunities. Hey! Over here! It's okay! Okay! okay. Here we go! Hey! hey. And then now, hey, Nia, you do the level two. Watch out, break! Will of the way! Sure! It's okay! Let us make use of it now! Jet West Flash! Why not? Hey! Nia! Go back. Break. Okay, come on. I just yell. Make haste and retreat. Why not? Okay, this is going okay. So fast. Okay, play combo. See what fire can do. Play combo. Third stage. She's a fire blade, Pyrus. I'm pretty sure she already knows. Really? I'm still getting stronger. Level up. Okay. That went fairly smoothly. Considering I was only level 8. What? She she repelled our attack. She's so strong. Mm. And this is without a driver. Stop yammering. Just get it. Jomak! This is an Ethernet! <laughs> Let's see you use your precious arts when you can't draw ether from the atmosphere. Even blades have weaknesses. This is one such weakness. Without the flow of ether, blades are quite useless. Nia! Jomak! Get out of here, Rex! Save yourself! I'm not gonna do that. I can't just leave you here. You've got your own mission, just move it! Yeah, but... No bets. Go! Rex, we must withdraw for now. It's our only chance. But... You won't escape. <laughs> ah! Rex! Ugh, damn it! Huh? Ah! Water! Pyra! Yes! Don't let them escape! Get after them! That's right, Rex. Run and never look back. To pull that off despite all this water. So, the legends of the Aegis were real. Hmm. Bridges fire burns blue instead of red, so it's hotter. Hey, hey! But then can't stand up to water. So each of them have a strength and a weakness. This way! Friends! Come this way! Tora help you escape! Who are you? Quick! No time for explain! Thanks. You saved us. But I gotta ask, why? No reason. No reason? Sorry, that not true. Truth is, Tora not like those big bully soldiers. Was thinking to test out shiny new boom biter on big bullies. That's when Tora see friends running from them. Boom biter missed and hit water pipe. But results not so bad, hey? 
Oh. So you shot the pipe. That right. And you're Tora. I'm Rex. And this is Pyra. It's so lovely to meet you. Good to meeting. <laughs> huh? Oh, actually, Tora have other reason for save you. Which is? Don't worry. Explain everything when get to House of Tora. This way. Party formation has changed. Nia's gone. It's just Rex and Pyra now. Nia and Dromark have been caught. <sighs> oh, we got Pyra's level 2. Like I've said before, when you get something on the Blade's affinity chart, open the chart. That's what you get if you keep at it. You know, the things that get unlocked... Call on me anytime. Don't actually unlock until you open the chart and see it pop up like this. So we got the level 2 reward, and we've also got the level 2 of Fire Mastery. <sighs> okay. Now that we've met Bridget, it's time to address one of the elephants in the room. So, this game has a lot of Blade characters. You know, there's basically an infinite number of common Blades, like what we saw that Gormati fellow get when in that cutscene a ways back. His Blade was a common Blade. So-called rare blades, like Pyra here. There's a fair number of them, like eh, maybe 30, something like that. 30 or 40. I don't remember exactly. The thing is, the vast majority, maybe not the vast majority, but definitely more than half, are, to be quite blunt, women in skimpy clothes with large breasts. So we've seen we've seen that with Pyra, we've seen that with Bridget, and it's really the majority of the rare blades out there. Big breasted women wearing skimpy clothes. And most of the rest of the rare blades are some form of male power fantasy. It is transparently obvious that the character designs were quite deliberately meant to appeal to the heterosexual male libido and ego. This has caused a lot of people to sneeringly dismiss Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as a quote-unquote waifu simulator. Now, I don't believe it's fair to just dismiss the entire game on those grounds, because there is a good game here. But honestly, I do agree with the underlying point of that criticism. I think it is a big distraction from the actual game. And I really do wish they had toned it down at least a little bit. I mean, that outfit that Bridget was wearing, for one thing, was ridiculous. And there's really no reason for it beyond, as I said, just appealing to the male libido. So, eh, I don't like it. It doesn't take away from my enjoyment of the game, but I don't like it. And I really do wish that they had toned it down somewhat. Still, like I said, there is a good game here. So... If, like me, you have a problem with that, my recommendation is just do your best to compartmentalize it. Don't let it distract you from the rest of the game. And hey, if you do like it, then huh, you won't have a problem with it anyway, so why worry, huh? The boy and his blade, who seemed to be working with them, got away. But we apprehended the girl from the wanted poster along with her blade. The town is once again safe for... Si, Podrick. Do you 
you remember what my orders were? Sir? I told you to capture the blade with the Emerald Core Crystal, did I not? Do you recall me ever telling you to capture some little girl with barely a bounty on her head? But, sir, she's a member of Torna. I'll say it slowly for you, just so we're clear. Get the blade with the emerald. Um, Consul Dougal, sir. What? I'm not exactly sure what colour emerald is supposed to be. Oh, give me strength! It's green, you idiot! Emerald is green! Like this! Green! Get it, ya clod? Oh, green! I get it now. So, emeralds are green. Huh. You dunderhead! How many blades do you see with green core crystals? It's patently obvious. How do you mix that blade up with some worthless cat monster? Actually, sir, technically I believe that's a tiger rather than a... Science! Ah. Consul! What is it? Haven't you heard of knocking? My apologies, sir. It's just that Lady Morag has... What? Special Inquisitor Morag has just arrived from the Motherland. Already? Her ship has just docked. This... this cannot be happening! Yes, it can, Consul. Personally, I think that vase that he was waving at Padraig looked more blue than green. <laughs> But, um... I've often suspected that I am ever so slightly colorblind myself. There are a lot of guns on that ship. No escort from inside? A noble with a title as fancy as Special Inquisitor ought to have at least some soldiers at her back for some sort of honor guard. You live down here? This just back door. Front entrance over there. Makes sense. Whoa! Is that the cloud sea down there? We're so high up. Nice view, eh? Tora likes to just sit and watch cloud sea sometimes. You have a wonderful home. <laughs> anyway, um, Rex Rex. Rex Rex? Rex Rex. Tora, explain other reason I help you. You see, Tora always wanted to make driver friends. Ah, interested in drivers, are you? But of course. Tora think it's amazing how Driver and Blade join spirits together to make big power. Tora really want to be sidekick of Rex Rex. Um, you know my name is just Rex, right? One Rex, not two. What is point? Well, nothing, I guess. It just sounds a bit different from what I'm used to. Double name just showed Tora's respect. Respect for great driver. Rex Rex should be proud. I'm not sure I've earned all that yet. Oh, all right. You can call me Rex Rex if it makes you happy. But instead of all this sidekick stuff, can't we just be friends? Really? Tora will be friend of Rex Rex? Hooray! <laughs> what a funny little guy. Hey, Tora. Do you know much about this town? Huh? You wouldn't happen to know where the army takes prisoners, would you? Rex, you're not planning to... We have to save Nier and Dromark. I thought you'd say that. Oh! You talk about Driver and Blade who were with Rex Rex before Tora's daring rescue! Yeah. Meh meh. 
Tora would have to ask around town for info like that. Hmm. Before we do anything, time for food! All of today's running around make Tora hungry. Need food to help Rex Rex. I'm a little peckish too. Can't we eat later? I want to find Nia and Dromok as soon as possible. <laughs> Stomach of Rex Rex tell different story. I, I can't help it, can I? Um, if it's all right with everyone, I could cook something. Pyra, I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> well, as long as fire is involved, I can do almost anything. Fry, steam, grill, you name it. Whoa! If you want ice cream, though, you might have to find someone else. Well, you can't have everything. <laughs> yes, there's a bit of Nopon continuity there with the way Tora calls him Rex Rex. In the first game, Xenoblade Chronicles, the, uh, main Nopon character there, Ricky, calls Dunban Dun Dun. So, yeah, Nopon will be Nopon, no matter what world they're on, I suppose. Tora, do you have any ingredients I could work with? Just what in the pantry there? Not much, really. Tora, sorry. It doesn't seem wise to go out and buy more supplies, so we'll just have to make do with what we have. Let's go see what we've got, then. Glitter spuds, sumpkins, oh, and here's an oil oyster and a single meaty carrot. And hot oranges, too. These aren't bad ingredients at all. All foods that can be eaten with no cooking. That's how Tora usually eats. That's a bit depressing. We aren't much better ourselves, you know. I guess you're right. So what do you think, Pyra? Can you make anything with this? Yes, I think this should be enough. I'll just use the kitchen, okay? Okay. All right, we got another skip travel point here in Taurus House. So let's go make dinner, or I guess it would be lunch. I just thought of a great menu idea. Look forward to that later. So this is one of Pyra's field skills, and we can use it to make these things. As long as we have all the items we need. Unfortunately, as you can see, we don't have all the items we need for meatball pot au feu or hot moonbean salad. We only have enough for the glitter bake. Oh man, this is delicious! Oh, yum, yummy! So super, very tasty! Simply exquisite. I haven't eaten this well in 120 years. I'm glad you liked it. It seems like I did okay. I was worried I'd have gotten a little rusty over the years. It didn't taste rusty at all. Uh, um, I mean... But Tora is curious. Pyra is fire using blade, yes? When Tora broke that water pipe, Pyra could still make fire. Come to think of it, you're right. That Bridget, the Imperial Blade, she used fire abilities just like Pyra, but the water had seemed to douse much of her strength. So, what are you saying? This world full of elemental energy called ether, yes? Ether comes in forms like fire, water, and wind. While battling, drivers and blades both draw power from ether. But fire not good with water. Other blade woman got splooshy with water, so fire powers all damp. But Pyra and I were able to use our powers with no problem. Indeed. They were unaffected. Why? Um, well, my powers don't come from fire. Meh meh? If powers not fire, why look like flames? That may be a little complicated to explain. Go on then. Tora like complicated things a lot. <sighs> well, um, uh, 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 it, 
Knock it off, Tora. Can't you see you're making her uncomfortable? Eh. Everyone has things they'd rather not talk about. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll be able to tell you about it soon enough. Don't worry about it. Right now, we need to think about how to rescue Nia. First, we go around town and find all information we can. Hmm. Yes, I dare say that we're all wanted criminals by this point. Pyra sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, friends. Tora has an idea. Back to these folks. Special Inquisitor Morag! To what do we owe this extreme pleasure? Had we but heard of your grace's visit, we could have prepared a suitable... I don't stand on ceremony, Consul. I'd rather you just did your job. Y your grace? Someone of your standing deserves to be treated as such. You are His Majesty's representative. Please permit us to lay on a meal befitting your grace. Until then, we would be honored if... You made impressive time. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh Lady Bridget! If we have found the Aegis, then there is no time to waste. But I fear the passage has taken its toll on our engines. The Aegis? H how do you... Is there a problem, Dougal? N uh, not at all, Your Grace. Good. Now, you've captured a driver from Torna. I am going to speak with her. What? Uh, why do you want... Dougal, I don't remember asking for your opinion. Y yes Your Grace, I'll take you to her right away. Morag really knows how to wield authority, doesn't she? <laughs> so, you are the Torna Ruffian. I must say you look a little... different from your poster. A little different? Whoever drew that should be the one in jail. <laughs> yes. I would be angry, too. You can drop the friendly act. You won't name your friends? My friends? I'm not so sure I'd call those trigger-happy Tona goons friends. I see. I think we have our wires crossed here. I am not talking about Torna. Huh? You're not? No. I was referring to your more recent travelling companions. The driver boy and his blade. Rex and Pyra. Well, that was easy. Damn it! This looks like it could actually work. <laughs> she sounds Good idea, crushed. Tora. Right, let's look for friends of Rex Rex. The race to find Nia. Definitely setting that as active. So there's a collection point. Come here. out, come out. Stuff to pick up. This device is going to be very important later, but right now we can't do anything with it. And here we are, back out in Torgoth, in the Galad Residential Zone. And for some reason, Pyra jumped off into the Cloud Sea. Okay, guess she wanted to go swimming. So, there are five markers on the compass there. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Oh yeah, I heard about that. Some Ardanian dude was saying they were going to execute the prisoner within the next few days. Those Torna guys are pretty bad, right? 
I heard they've killed loads of drivers to steal their core crystals. Pretty amazing if the Empire really captured one of them. The Empire is so cool. I wonder what they'll do at this execution thing anyway. I've never seen one before. I gotta see for myself. You guys should come along too. Thank you so much. Okay, that's not good. This kid has no idea what it means. Let's see. All the other markers are up. Because there's up arrows above them. And these kids, I believe, are the younger siblings of that guy who just became a driver in a cutscene earlier in the episode. Yep, here we go. I can't believe Big Bro is a driver now. That means he has to go to more Ardain, right? It's gonna be lonely without him, but I'll be fine. I gave him tons of advice before he left. Like, to make sure that he stays close to his blade when he fights. He needs to do that, because that's how you deepen your affinity with your blade. And when your affinity deepens, you get stronger, and so does your blade. You'll do, you'd do well to remember that, too. Really. You know, sometimes talking to random people can be better than reading the tutorials. I've got a big brother called Jack, and he became a driver. And guess what? He got into the Ardanian army. Um, what weapon did his blade have again? Uh, if it was a great axe or a megalance, he could smack the bad guys super easily. But it's dangerous, too, because if you deal that much damage all at once, they'll get really angry at you. If it was a bitball, he'd be able to heal injured teammates. Bitballs are good at doing that. If he's got teammates with a shield hammer or a chroma katana, though, he needs to pay attention to their HP. See, I know stuff. That's because me and Jack study together. Yeah, there's like... I don't know... Like, 15 different weapons? My big bro became a driver and went off to more Ardain. Wow, pretty impressive. He said he's going to earn bucket loads of cash. If only Da had stayed here with us. Yeah, there's some backstory there. Anyway, we gotta find the information. And they're all off in that direction. Okay. Oh. Um, there's one that's really close by. Where is it? it? Must be up here. Oh, I'm getting further away from the one that's close. There it is. Or I should say, there he is. Ellis. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Ah, uh, sorry, I'm only interested in plants. I don't keep up with the latest rumors. I want to become a botanist in Moor Ardain, but my parents keep saying it's too dangerous. It's been a whole decade now since Moor Ardain and Oriya ceased hostilities. And I'm sure there and sure there's been this nasty group called Torna popping up in the news lately, but still, it's not like anything's bad is gonna happen where Moor Ardain's in charge. Doesn't this peaceful town prove that? Uh, well, more Ardanes decided to make themselves a thorn in our side. So, we don't entirely agree with that, but still, Moi. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Oh yeah, I heard something interesting. Apparently, the tournament member that the Ardanian Empire captured was some Gormati girl called Nia. Nia. That name seems familiar somehow. Didn't the old Lord of Eshel a decade ago have... Actually, let's not talk about that. It's not a happy thing to think about. Thank you so much. The name of a Tornin. So, if we open the item menu... So, we've got the name of a Tornin. The Tornin rebel held by the Ardanian army is a Gormati girl called Nia, like we didn't already know that. A prisoner of the Imperial Army is of the Imperial Army is to be executed in the coming days. Now that's new and very disturbing. And let's see. Okay, here's someone. And arrived. And I've got another location. <laughs> All in one piece. Ambles Fountain. Excellent. Another skip travel point. Have you heard anything about a girl called Mia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? I don't know anything about that. But the grown-ups do seem to be talking about secret, complicated stuff a lot lately. Apparently, there's some kind of dangerous people causing trouble. It's only been ten years since the war between Moradain and Oriya ended. Why would they stir up more trouble? It sounds like a real pain. I hope the Ardanian soldiers will be able to protect us. Okay. 
Okay. There's someone over here. When did it get so late? Oh, and I've started glowing. I'm a bit self-conscious. <laughs> okay, sure, let's talk to Sigholm. Did Rex Rex know they're recruiting over there for new drivers? Yeah, I saw that earlier when we first arrived in the city. Rex Rex should try too. Chance of success basically 100%. I'm wanted by the Ardanian Empire right now, remember? It seems like a bad idea to make myself conspicuous. Rex Rex make good point. Tora was just too curious to see what kind of blade Rex Rex awakened. At any rate, I don't need to awaken a blade, do I? I've already got Pyra. Come now, Rex. Don't tell me you thought drivers could only bond with a single blade. What? Is that not right? Not at all. Many drivers have more than one. With Nia gone, we're a bit short on numbers right now. We might not hold up all that well in a fight. Perhaps it would actually be a good idea to get yourself a new blade. A new blade opens up new possibilities in battle, after all. Hmm. It would stop you from putting so much strain on Pyra as well. Seems like a good thing all around, if you ask me. Well, if Pyra doesn't mind, I guess it couldn't hurt to try. I don't have any objections. The more, the merrier. Then it's settled. The question is, where are we going to get ourselves a core crystal? Now that's one question I can answer. I just happen to have one stored away for just such an occasion. Rare Gramps hide core crystal with such small body. The key to awakening a new blade is to foster a powerful resonance with the driver's spirit. Focus your whole mind on the core crystal as you touch it, and try to hold a clear picture in your mind of the blade you wish to awaken. I'm not sure I really understand, but I'll give it a try. I hope you awaken a wonderful blade. The unnamed core crystal. Try not to think too hard of where Gramps was hiding it. So, we awaken our first core crystal. It's going to be a common blade with knuckle claws weapons and the wind element. Other factors can be randomized, but those three factors are always the same. Gokuto. So, as I said, Knuckle Claws, Wind Element. And let's see. So, Knuckle Claws are always healers. You know, he whether your attack, whether the, a blade is an attacker, a healer, or a tank, is determined by what weapon they have. So, Knuckle Claws are always healers. Block rate 10, critical rate 15, physical defense plus 13%, ether defense plus 5%. And... Agility mod plus 11%. Specials, flying knuckle, assault rush, executioner, and Heracles break. Blade Arts, back attack up, increases backstab damage, halves aggro, nullify reaction, nullifies one reaction, okay. Battle skills, into the ground, increases damage dealt to toppled enemies by 50%, that's pretty meh. Field skills, wind mastery. Okay. No ox cores, because obviously I don't have any.
Rex's ability to resonate with core crystals has been unlocked. You can bond with a blade at any time by going to main menu, blades, bond blade. Core crystals aren't much use just laying around, so it can't hurt to resonate with them and see what you get. Also, the higher a driver's luck stat value, the better are their chances of awakening certain very special blades. Once you have yourself a new blade, you'll need to engage it so that it can take part in battle. Add blades to your battle party in main menu, characters, character setup, and engage blades. Up until now, Rex has had to rely on Pyra alone for support in battle, but now you'll be able to engage a variety of other blades and expand your support options. To take advantage of the different blades in battle, press the directional button corresponding to each blade's face icon and perform the blade switch. In no time at all, the blade who was previously supporting you will retreat, and the new blade will take their place on the battlefield. Of course, switching blades will change both your weapon and your available arts. Different weapons have different benefits and drawbacks in battle, so use blade switches tactically after considering the current situation. That looks like a good one. Meh meh, fur always stand on end whenever Taurus see Driver resonate with Crystal. So cool. Hey, don't look at me like that. You're making me feel weird. Well, looks like we got a new recruit anyway. Let's go out and find out what happened to Nia. Rex, not so fast. Huh? What's up? Aren't you going to kit out aren't you going to kit your new blade out? You can tune up the you can tune up the weapon with a core chip from that smithy there. If Rex Rex never used courtship before, then now is good, very good time to start. You can really tell the difference between a driver who uses courtships and one who doesn't. I'm starting to understand. Now for the main... To <sighs> Boy, blah 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 blah. I've forgotten how long this can get. That over there is an ox core shop. I don't suppose you've had a lot of call to go in there before you became a driver. You're right about that. I used to wonder what all that strange gear was for, though. Perhaps we should head over and give it a try, then. Ox cores are just the thing for supplementing a blade's power. They're all different types. Some boost defense, some make strong against insects or stronger at nighttime. Meh. The number of ox cores you can equip varies from blade to blade, mind. Interesting stuff. Now this is the important part, so listen up. Usually when you get an aux course in an empty state, you won't boost your blade with it empty. Okay, so how do you fix that then? Huh. I see. So this gizmo here makes aux cores usable. You catch on fast. That's right. This machine takes collectibles and raw aux cores and refines them into something useful. Here's one you can have a go with. I've been saving it up for this very occasion. Critical up two. Rex Rex. Best not to think about where he stash it. Yes, Tor's right about that. It's not much good without collectibles, though. Here. And he gives us some deer wood. Okay. Meh meh. He really have a lot stashed away there. You're good to go, Rex. Refine it. Got it. And as soon as we're done, let's go and look for some info about Nia. Okay, so critical up 2. Boosts critical hit rate by 12%. So I need eight items from this list. This is the main thing that you use collectibles for. All those things that I've been getting from collection spots, they have a number of uses, but refining aux cores is the main one. I can use any combination of eight items. Since you're standing in front of an Oxcore shop, let's revisit the topic of Oxcores for a moment. At shops like these, you can get your Oxcores refined. You'll need collectible items to refine Oxcores. The number of collectible items you'll need is defined individually for each Oxcore. Once you have all the collectibles you need, you can head to the shop to get your Oxcore refined. But watch out, the higher the value of the Oxcore, the more difficult it's likely to be to find all the necessary items. If you want to be able to refine your aux cores as soon as you get them, you'll need to always be on the lookout for collection points on your travels. Aux cores can be equipped to blades in main menu characters, blade setup, equip aux cores. Okay. Da 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 da. 
All that ox core stuff. Also, before now, Rex was only able to equip a single blade. If we go into his Engage Blades menu, now we can put two there. Convenient, since we now have his second one. You can count on me. It's always good to have as many blades equipped as you can get. Because for instance, if you look at Gokuto over there, the physical defense and ether defense increases 13% and 5%. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that those are passive benefits you gain as long as he's equipped. It doesn't matter whether or not he's currently out and fighting at your side. As long as you have him equipped, you should get those benefits passively. So now both Pyra and Gokuto are here. If we go into his menu, his affinity chart is pretty chintzy looking. He only has two levels of these two skills and one level of these two. He does have three levels of wind mastery, which is decent. But yeah, he's nothing to really get enthusiastic about. And into the ground in particular. And that can be situationally useful, increased damage to toppled enemies. Toppled enemies, we haven't seen that yet. But once you have the break status effect inflicted on an enemy as long as you have an art that can all, that can inflict topple then you can also inflict topple on that enemy you have to inflict break then you can inflict topple and then there's two more stages of that combo after topple so most of the time you'll be going for that whole four stage combo break topple then launch then smash you know Break the enemy, topple them to the ground, launch them into the air, smash them back down to the ground. That's the so-called driver combo. So, uh, most of the time, you're not going to leave an enemy toppled. You're going to want to launch them. But, you know, early in the game, you know, before you have access to the launch, to arts that can inflict launch, then, yeah, increased damage to toppled enemies can come in handy. And then let's see, his three specials, or are these arts? No, I think these are specials. I think these are his specials. So his level one, level two, and level three specials. And then to get level two of Assault Rush and Executioner, you know, the condition for this, the condition to improve Assault Rush is actually use Assault Rush. And to improve Executioners, just have him out in combat. And then to increase wind power, got to acquire ore collectibles. And then for the top level of wind power, got to acquire vegetables. But then to get all of these improvements in addition to those conditions I also have to unlock the key affinities probably won't take very long level 2 in particular only needs 10 trust I'll get that pretty quickly and a total of 400 to get up to level 5 yeah actually wouldn't take too long as long as I use Gokuto regularly And then ox cores. He has three ox core slots. That is pretty good, actually. I don't have that many ox cores yet. And honestly, critical critical up, increasing, you know, boosting critical hit rate, not important for a healer blade. I'd rather put that on Pyra. Speaking of which. 
Pyro only has two slots. Now, if I unequip that... See, if you pay attention to critical rate at the bottom right corner down there, currently it's 19. If I put on the critical up rate, critical up to aux core, it only increases by 2% rather than by the 12% it says. That's because it multiplies the rate by 12% rather than adding 12%. So that's why it only incre actually increases by 2%. Still, 2% is better than none. And with Pyra being an attacker, a damage dealer, you want her to have as high a critical rate as possible. And since I'll be using Gokuto for the time being, let's get him a better, let's get him a core chip. Boy, that increases his critical rate quite a bit, actually. Actually makes his critical rate better than Pyro's. Huh. Okay, there we go. So, you know, as a beginner's blade, Gokuto is okay. And then let's examine Rex's arts with knuckle claws. I can't improve them at all because I don't have any WP. But let's see what they do. So Feral Uppercut inflicts blowdown, which uh, can actually temporarily knock the enemies down. It's not the same as Topple. It's similar, but it's not the same. Grand Smash spawns HP potions. Bullet Punch doesn't do anything except damage. And Mock Straight Punch increases damage dealt from the back. For your usual healer, damage from the back might actually be good because Ideally, you want someone else to have the aggro. You don't want your healer to have enemies aggro. So, you know, a healer would probably actually get a lot of opportunity to attack from the back. It doesn't do as much damage as bullet punch. But it uh, has a faster recharge. Yeah, honestly, though, if you've got a healer, you're not going to worry too much about damage. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and switch that in. More damage from the back. And... On the other hand, I just noticed... Bullet punch. Has a different range. Also. It says its range is just ahead. Whereas. The mock punch. Specifically is after one target. So, Bullet Punch could conceivably damage more targets. But again, healer, damage is not what you're really worrying about. Alright. Sigal, anything to say? Have you heard anything about a girl named called Nia who was captured by the Ardenians recently? Who are you, people? Uh-oh, maybe it wasn't a good idea to ask an Ardenian soldier. Um, there was something I wanted to ask, but now I've clean forgotten what it was. Huh, if it's information you're after, go pay for it at the local informant. Chatting with the populace isn't our job, you understand. Neither is giving us treasure, but treasure here we go. Quiet. An overdrive protocol. Two common core crystals, the overdrive protocol, and a bunch of money. 
Overdrive protocol allows you to transfer a blade from one driver to another. Right now, not important. Uh, there's three more people to talk to. Seems one of them is over here. Ah, there's one. There it is. Dward. Have you heard anything about a girl n called Nia who was captured by the Ardenians recently? Hmm, can't say I have. If it's information you're after, why don't you go visit the informant over near Lysel Greens? He's one crafty little Napon. There's not much he doesn't know. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's the same thing the Ardenian soldier told me. So the informant is here between the greens and the fishmonger but before we talk to him let's go do some parkour let's see so, the other person to talk to should be over there, and I can get over there if I jump down here. Run along here, jump over here, Up. and there's a treasure trove conveniently required. on the way. Bit more money, always useful. That was nearly a thousand gold, wow. A bit more money. More than just a bit. Run over here. Drop down here. Tataka! Tataka love high places. It takes Tataka a whole year to make to top of roof. Wow, pretty impressive. Tataka hope one day to climb to top of windmill, but not have single idea how to make proper climb. This way Tataka wish he had blade. With blade, could jump to top of mill in one spring. Tataka very jealous. Maybe Tataka can become driver someday. Maybe. Don't give up your dreams, little Napon. Up. The Chief's Residence. Hi there. My dad was saying that the way drivers learn stuff is pretty different from normal people. Like, they can use the experience they built up in the past to develop whatever skills they need right now. That's kind of the opposite of how it works normally, huh? But it means drivers have to stop and rest from time to time, so think about what skills are most important. Don't forget to do that, okay? Okay, I was looking for the other person we could talk to. There's the informant who's kind of over there. There's another one who's close by. Looks like it's down below us, maybe? Ah, there we are. There we are. Sulia. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardenians recently? Forget about that. Did you know this? Apparently, whenever a new blade is born, it has to be registered with the Praetorium of Indol. Well, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, we heard about that from those Ardenian soldiers during the fight. Registering with Indol. I wonder what that's about. He asked knowingly. Yeah, so I bet that guy who just got scouted to be a driver will have to go there sooner or later. When I grow up, I want to become a driver and visit Indol too. Yeah, that's interesting information, but not what we needed to know. Edgar. Well, what have we here? Been a while since I last saw drivers and blades who aren't in the Imperial Army. Tell you what, I'll give you a little tip for free. A driver's element is determined by the blade they happen to be using. So if you're using a wind element blade, your attacks are going to be wind element as well. And certain elements are opposed to each other as well. For instance, if you use a fire element blade to attack a water element monster, you'll do more damage. Switching between blades based on the enemy you're facing is a pretty important tactic. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that's what elements are all about, really. But that's, real, but that's only half the story. It's also important when it comes to blade combos. You've seen me do a few blade combos. Padre. <laughs> He's the guy we just fought. Sure, let's go talk to him. 
Yeah, ouch, that's gonna leave a bruise. The worst part of being head of security is having to report to my boss. He's such a jerk. In fact, you better not distract me or I'll get an earful again. We've got to keep a lookout on the lookout for this blade with a green core crystal. Yeah. It's been suggested, you know, I've seen this in some of the research I did on this game, that Padre... You know, I know that's meant to make him sound like he's stupid, but it's actually been suggested that he's colorblind. Like I said before. Because really, he's not incompetent. He actually did a decent job back there. He captured Nia pretty easily. Turuni, the informant. Have you heard anything about a girl called Nia who was captured by the Ardanians recently? Turuni know this, of course. But Turuni is informant by trade. Cannot provide information without proper compensation. 3,000 G. Well, we have enough. Uh, rumors of a battleship. A Gamadi girl is imprisoned in a Titan battleship. Her identity is unknown. Oh, we know what it is. Thanks much for custom. Inside Titan battleship, Gamadi girl being held prisoner. Unfortunately, Taruni not yet receive intelligence specifying prisoner name. But rumors say big ship arrived for sole purpose of holding one measly girl. People of Gormok getting along quite well with Empire nowadays, so trouble like this not very welcome. That seemed to be opinion of most of Toragoth resident. That about extent of information Taruni know. Enough to satisfy friends? Thanks. Alright, we got that information. You sleuthed around and learned that Nia is being held in a Titan battleship. She's going to be executed tomorrow. Race to find Nia. All right. Return to Taurus House. Will do. But next episode, I believe, I think it's time to stop for now. Viewers, thank you very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. In the next episode, we will return to Taurus House, as we are being told to do right here. And we will make our plans to rescue Nia. See you then.